I, mean, I think what we're seeing in this poll is we are seeing in most national polls is this, you know, anybody who says this is going to be a landslide or lopsided hasn't really looked at the electorate or been around uh, the nation for the last, uh, oh gosh, five or six election cycles, at least uh, presidential. So, so yeah, so we see a, a close race um, and I think it reflects right now um, what, whether this uh, turns out to be more of a referendum on the president or uh, a, a choice between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And clearly the first would be something that the Biden people would want because Trump's approval rating, although higher than he's getting in these toss up questions, uh, still is in jeopardy. I mean, I think, you know, the we see a number that's not necessarily a winning number for him. And this, this uh, toss up 40%, low 40s, he needs to be up at least to the mid 40s and then probably even higher to, to get reelected. So that's one thing I would say. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is this is a state by state, uh, region by region election. Um, and the Republicans have uh, only once in the last 32 years gotten more than a majority of the vote. And that was George Bush in 2004, uh, and he had 50.8%, so just barely. Uh, so the Republicans, because of the Electoral College uh, and sometimes a third party candidate, have been able to um, win the election uh, with getting in the 40s. Uh, and a plurality, or in the case of last time, not even a plurality, uh, but enough if you can distribute the vote correctly. Look, when, you, when you're incumbent, it gives you into a somewhat awkward position when things aren't going well. And so, yeah, right now he's pitching the economy, reopen the country. And certainly that's a Midwestern message, which he ultimately, you know, for people who are, you know, economically vulnerable, uh, those are people who he needs to kind of get back into, you know, the kind of economic numbers. We're not going to get back to anywhere near where we were uh, when he was planning a strategy about, you know, do you want to disrupt you know, when things are going so well. I mean, this, that whole narrative is, has changed. Um, so that's a big deal. But then when you start talking the economy and you move away from the healthcare concerns, well, if you're in your 70s, uh, which concern do you have more, you know, front and center, health or the economy? Uh, and you're clear, you know, everybody's concerned about the economy, but you're concerned about, you know, you're in a more vulnerable age population for healthcare. Uh, so, in a sense, the wedge for the president right now is really between, you know, the emphasis on the economy, uh, which clearly is so needed with all the unemployment, but also the notion of how quickly do we reopen, and if you're elderly, this is, uh, you know, could be a problem for the president. So, interestingly, uh, <laughs> President Trump is not doing quite as well, although he's ahead among elderly folks, than he did last time against Hillary Clinton. But Joe Biden is not doing as well among younger people. Uh, and that may be a carryover from the primary still with Bernie Sanders. Uh, you know, I don't think uh, Donald Trump in the past has been that strong with young people. Um, but right now, so there's a little bit of a dynamic. In the end, that might work its way out. This is sometimes the stuff you see early in the summer where people are kind of shopping around a little bit. One of the, the greatest values of polling is the trend, is understanding uh, not just the, the snapshot of what the public opinion is right now today, but understanding how that has shifted over time. By Super Tuesday, Barack Obama had consolidated 67% of the, of the youth vote in 2008. Um, Hillary Clinton had not done quite as well with the youth vote. As we remember, she was trailing uh, Bernie Sanders with young voters in 2016, but she was still able to get up to 33% of the youth vote. Unfortunately, Joe Biden by Super Tuesday only had 26% of the of, of youth Democratic primary votes. And that is a very daunting um, forecast for the work that he has to do to bring those voters back into his coalition. Uh, we know that, that he's going to have to, uh, he's going to have to hit at least 60 to 70% um, with young voters uh, to build the type of coalition that has, that has propelled Democrats to victory in the past. And right now he's quite far from that. A third of young people consider themselves Democrats, about a quarter consider themselves uh, Republicans, but another third consider themselves independent. And while they do lean uh, quite progressive in a lot of their issues, 
while they align with most uh, most Democrats on um, on progressive policy, frankly, we have, we have seen their ability to either swing back and forth on the political spectrum or swing in and out of of politics altogether. That that independent young voter is a voter we spend quite a quite a lot of time trying to understand. We screen them into focus group rooms specifically voters who have a neutral or, or, or negative opinion of both parties um, because we understand the impact that they can have um, and their ability to swing uh, to, to swing states like Florida, Ohio, Wisconsin, and, and Pennsylvania. And recently we did some focus groups for the NAACP amongst young black voters. And there was this one quote that was so poignant to me. Uh, it, it was a young man, in Phil a young black voter in Philadelphia who had voted for Barack Obama twice, had not voted in another election since. Um, and he's that key voter that we that Democrats have to activate in order to flip states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. And he said to me, you know, my hood did not get better under Obama and it hasn't gotten worse under Trump. And there's a realization there that no matter how much I agree with you, if you're not making my life and my community better, then what reason do I have to continue to participate? And that's the persuasive message that Democrats uh, are gonna be, um, are gonna be hard pressed to, to make to young voters who feel like they have participated, they have gotten engaged, and, and their communities have not gotten any better as we thought of.